rolling, 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 rolling. Stuff's falling in the back of the car. All right, it is day three, and we are headed back to the range for Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge. Today is a precision rifle course, which is very much like the speed course, meaning you're gonna have different shooting positions and um, different targets to shoot at, at at different distances, but rather than um, shooting head to head against another shooter and points being awarded for who wins that round, this is, there are individual points for each target and you have a, a theoretical maximum that you can earn on each stage. So uh, a kind of similar, but kind of different type of competition. Still a lot of fun to shoot. Um, if you're familiar with like NRL 22, uh, it's very much along those lines. And uh, you know, it's gonna be another beautiful day here in Utah and I'm really looking forward to it. But um, we'll try and get a little video of, of some of the, the shooting. Um, but I wanna ask John, because now he's shot two cards in Benchrest, I wanna ask John a couple of questions, because uh, I think it may help you guys. If you're thinking about getting into doing some Benchrest shooting, uh, John, what were your big takeaways from um, from your, your two days on the bench? Uh, and by the way, um, shooting great cards uh, in tough wind conditions for somebody who, uh, if, like if you looked at the rankings, he was in a very tough group. And I'm going to be interested later on to try and compare what he shot um, to what some of the folks in the sportsman's class and a lot of folks in the sportsman's class are doing it for the first time. I'd be very curious to see how your points would, would play out. But that's totally a separate conversation. Sure. Um, what did you take away? Like, what are you gonna what are you gonna work on maybe differently in the future? And what would you say to a new shooter who is just gonna get into the hundred yard bench rush? Sure. First of all, good morning everybody. Thanks for joining us again. Really hope you're enjoying these videos. Uh, we're having a hell of a time making them. <laughs> so to answer Paul's question, uh, PG, I would say that the first thing that I noticed after shooting my first card was that I let myself feel rushed. I let myself feel pressured and there's absolutely no need to do that. <clears throat> they have a half hour. Yeah, the 30 minutes that they allow for shooting that card feels like forever. Uh, the first time I shot, I, th I think I had 20 minutes left on the clock and I had a lot of time to stew and sit there and think about how I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. If you, something I did today for the second card that I think helped me. Yesterday? No, no, from yesterday to today. Okay, Yeah, I'm got sorry. it. Yeah. We just got up. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, It's uh, the caffeine hasn't kicked in yet. We're a little rocky. Um, rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge. Uh, I see what you did there, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was good. So, uh, from the first card to the second card, uh, something I did when I shot my second card was I set a timer on my phone so I had easy access to check the time right at my fingertips, which, believe it or not, take, took a lot of pressure off me worrying about, oh God, how much time is left? How much time did I lose? Where am I at? I could just glance down and go, oh God, I've got 25 minutes. I've got all the time in the world. I don't think anybody really uses all that time unless the wind conditions are really, really horrendous. Um, yeah, if you sat down and it was awful, you could probably afford to wait 15 minutes to see it. I mean, no, if it got worse, that, that would that's, suck. That's the risk, right? But you, you definitely have time to wait out a bad wind. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so your big thing would be Make sure you budget time or plan to use time to get comfortable on that bench before you even take a shot. Yes, and I would say for any of us as shooters, 
we all tend to kind of fixate on what we can do for gear and what we can do for accessories. If you want a cheap way to improve for this, I think that's it right there. And uh, I know it's generic for people to say, you know, stay calm, breathe, don't let it get in your head. But guys, uh, that first card that I shot, my heart was just hammering. It's super exciting to be here. Oh, God. like this is a super exciting. <laughs> and when you when you look down the line, and you're like, oh, okay. Well, I'm shooting against Ted Beer. I'm shooting against Ken Hicks. I'm shooting against this Russian dude who flew <laughs> from Russia just to shoot the bench rest because he's like the Russian champion. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, like th there are some there are some really top tier air gunners here and you're like oh look at this guy you know like I'm, I, it's it's and they're but they're, they're super awesome people and they're super helpful and you know there's no reason to be starstruck but let's face it you wind up getting starstruck a, yeah, a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh and so all of a sudden that I mean, you were so cool on that first day, all day, as long as the delays were waiting for your turn to shoot. And then, yeah, I know, because I mean, I've known you a long time. You were you were amped. You were amped up yeah. on that first card. I yeah. thought you were a lot. This dude's taking a nap. I know I'm driving, sorry. But this dude's taking a nap <laughs> before his card the second day. So it's like, okay, I guess he's chill now. We're good. So let me ask you this. If you were going to add something or look to add something, you know, if we're thinking ahead to RMAC 2022 and we're thinking, so what is John Rupel? And we know that, like, you're going to upgrade a scope and, and there's some other things that you're right, interested right. in doing, right? So I, I know you're looking at, you talked about, you even talked about a new scope while we were driving to the competition. Yeah. And I know yeah. you've looked through a few different things here and I'm sure have some different ideas about where you want to go. But... Is there anything you're like, I think this is something I want to add to my kit moving into uh, the future? Wind flags, easily, top really? of the list. Top of the list, wind flags, for me. Uh, that's one of the things that so I, like, go ahead. Like a ribbon on a post kind of wind flag, or are you talking like a wind flag? Well, and I was gonna say, you've, you've got a lot of choices. Some guys were just a piece of like nylon or a plastic ribbon just tied to a stick at various points out through the range. Saw a lot of people with a little something dangling off the end of their moderator so they could get a wind read right at the bench. Um, but then we Most saw the op pel Peloton tape. That, okay, that's yeah, what I was seeing. Un Untake ah. a thing, stick it right, in, right to your Donnie. Ah. And uh, you got, you got a, it's like, I can't believe JSB doesn't market a free wind flag with every tin of pellets because it's, it's, uh, it's right right there yeah, right, 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 re, reduce reuse recycle right yep. so um <laughs> the uh and then then we saw the opposite extreme where people had some really elaborate wind fry wind flags and we saw a double fin one that looks like a tie fighter <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that was a homemade you know home built one but still very effective by by all accounts from what i can see but there were a different a wide variety in fact, um, I did a little bit of research last night when we got back to the hotel just to see, okay, so how much do these things really cost? What are options are out there? Well, you know, we got a 24 hour car ride home. Um, <laughs> plenty of time to dig into the- Yes, we do. Uh, we have plenty of time to dig into the, but but you, you did some looking last night. What kind do you think you wanna get, like that's gonna be useful for you and your shooting style? So I saw it two that jumped out for me they both operate in the same fashion as you're looking at them on the range the meter looks kind of like a pendulum and it'll swing oh, yeah. kind of left or right depending on which way the wind is blowing but as the pendulum sitting completely vertical you're either in the red or on zero and as it tips out it'll either go yellow or one and it'll it'll you know you're either I said red in the middle, it should have been green in the middle, green for go. Sure. But then when it swings a little bit, you're yellow or a one. As it swings further, it goes into the red or into a two. Do you have any idea what, I saw that, in, in fact, uh, Enrique, I think it was, had one next to me out the first day I was shooting on my first card. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have any sense of what one and two mean? Is it arbitrary? Is it just a numbered scale or does it actually calibrate to something? So I, I don't know if it's consistent with all the different models that they make, but uh, I know I originally thought that it was, okay, is that, is that reading like one is a one mile per hour wind and two is a two mile per yeah, hour wind? it can't be that because no, it would have been right, like upside right. down and down the street because <laughs> some of those winds were like, hey, there's Woo! a gust of 15 miles an hour and that's moving your pellet 12 inches on the target. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. No, that's okay. So... I, I have to dig in a little bit deeper to find out. <clears throat> so it's probably some, they may have, it's scaled to something. Like there could be some kind it's of It's got to be. It's got to be. Otherwise, why would you have something that gives We're on you. on the road, folks. Yeah, don't forget. Off road now. Yeah, off road. If, if you're going to have a scale that's going to give you some precision information, then it's got to be consistent. So sure. it's got to, it's got to corroborate with something. Makes um, sense. But for me, that would be the next thing I would add to my toolkit as shooting here today I really didn't do a whole lot of wind read 90% of what I did was shoot on the ciders and then try to quickly move on target while the wind was still the same yeah which was give, gave me some relative success but I do feel like a good wind read piece of equipment would be a, a really good thing to add to the toolbox that makes go, sense. going forward that makes sense I've played with uh, with the homemade style of wind flags and just was trying to be a little more minimalistic this this go around so uh, did not did not wind up setting anything on my own and I don't feel like it hurt me because so many other people had wind flags um, but if you're if you're gonna want to be able to practice with your own equipment you gotta have your own you gotta have your own equipment <laughs> so you know like I'm looking at it and trying to develop a relative sense. My time on the bench um, was kind of surveying the available wind flags so that I had some sense of what the data was co doing coming to me. I, I, I do, and, and I, I'm sure in editing, I've looked now at what John was talking about and, and shown you kind of the kind of flag he's talking about, but uh, they're not cheap. It's, uh, it's an investment. Yep, especially if you consider you really don't want just one, yeah, you're you going to want two or three. Two or three. I know at one point I was shooting with four different flags. It was too much information for me. And right. it freaked me out when right. one was going this way and one was going this way. Well, guys, uh, we actually have to get over to the event briefing for the morning and get our gear situated. So uh, try and get you, if not, some video of the precision stuff and maybe to this afternoon is Big Boar Slug. Uh, neither of us are shooting in that, but we have some friends who are. So uh, we'll try and get you either pictures or video of that so we can tell you a little bit about what that's about. But uh, we'll wrap up at the end of the day, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. It's just going to be seconds for you. We get a whole day of shooting. You guys, it's like right now. All right. Welcome. Um, I'm going to get the shooters me to go for the precision rifle course. Um, I first wanted to thank everybody yesterday, um, shooters and staff, volunteers, everybody. Yesterday went awesome, don't you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a great time. So uh, I anticipate just as much fun today. Um, we're gonna get going on the precision rifle course. Um, this, for, if, if it wasn't clear, this is a pellet only stage, so there's, there's no slugs in, in this match. Um, we put together some really fun uh, stages for you guys today. I'm excited. And uh, one thing to note is the first five stages of this match is the NRL uh, 22 course of fire for August. So if you want to report that score, um, you can do so. So that's pretty cool. Um, go over safety. A lot of the, a lot of the same things. Um, we got a lot of gun transfers um, going back and forth or from position to position. So when you are in the course of fire and you need to transition to a different barricade or a different position, bolt open as you tr transition, okay? Um, I, I know it's hard when you're under pressure and you, you're under the clock, but I'll just remember, keep that bolt open when you're moving, okay? Um, it's just a little bit safer that way, so. Again, muzzle control is make sure everybody keeps muzzles down range or, or up so it's, we don't have a danger that way. Um, 
pay attention to the courses of fire. Um, they, they're, they're written out pretty, pretty detailed in how they're supposed to go. And pay attention if you're five people back, you know, you're the fifth person or whatever in the stage to shoot. By the time you get to the line, you should probably know how to shoot the course of fire, right? You've just watched five people shoot the course of fire. Um, it just helps run the match a lot smoother and faster. If you guys are paying attention watching the course of fire, so you're not just coming up to the line and then taking five minutes to figure out how to do it. Um, that's not fair to your squad and other guys trying to, trying to get the match done. So just please pay attention to what, what the match is. Watch the people that are going before you so you, you, you're very familiar with it before you ever start. Plus, it can help you a lot. You can watch how people do things or if you can see when, you know, see if they're missing somehow. That's going to help you a lot. So pay attention to the people shooting in front of you uh, so, that, so you know the course of fire. Um, any questions on the match so far? When you say bolt open, you want bolt open and magazine out? No, sir, you can leave the magazine in, just, just bolt, bolt open. Um, oh, one thing though, please don't shoot the props. We've got some cool props out there for you guys. Try not to, to shoot those, obviously. And uh, one thing to note as well, we've had people wander off and shoot at other ranges and stuff when they have time. We cannot do that if we don't have safety officers down there. We, we would get booted right out of this range if somebody were to just go around. So please don't just wander off and shoot on your own. Um, it's a big no no this range. So. Um, so, a little bit different. We're going to use practice score again with the tablets. Um, but one thing different we're not going to have the tablets migrate the squads. Oh, that fine. that tablet will stay with each stage, okay? It makes it a little bit easier. So, um, that being said, we'll get you guys squatted up right away, and uh, we'll get you guys rolling. Is there any other questions on the course of fire? Okay. Yeah. So, same thing on how we did yesterday with the speed. You'll you'll just shoot all five courses on each uh, range that you're on that you start on, and then we'll do a range transition, okay? So uh, check out where you go. Let's go ahead and disperse and we'll get to our spots and let's get rolling. Good luck. Um, if I look a little tired, it's because um, we've been burning the candle at both ends, and today was a uh, was was a long day, and so I'm back in the hotel room, and just want to give you an update on what's gone on uh, since I went like that and uh, disappeared from you guys. Uh, we started the morning with the precision rifle course. John and I were shooting in different groups. We don't know what those scores are and probably won't find out what those are until the banquet when they announce uh, who who is in what 
position, um, that at least that's my assumption. Um, but by now you will have seen a couple of clips, uh, just to give you a taste of, of what that was like. Um, if you like PRS kind of shooting, um, it's fun. It's definitely a fun style of shooting. Um, it's probably more fun if you like shooting from different awkward, um, and in some cases creative. I mean, there was one hole or <laughs> one hole, <laughs> there was one stop on the course that was a Caddyshack hole um, and you were shooting steel gophers, but you had to do it out of a golf cart. I mean, that was really cool. It was fun. It was inventive. There was a poker uh, themed uh, stage where you had to uh, flip a card off a deck and then there were um, hearts and spades and diamonds and clubs out at different distances. So if you the club was um, like 89 yards or 90 yards or something like that. So if you flip a club, you had to make two of that yardage shot. If a uh, diamond was up close, if you flipped a diamond, you kind of got a relatively easy shot. So it was pretty cool the way they had it set up. Um, 10 different courses. My group, um, we had a couple of no-shows. So we only had six people. So we kind of flew through it. Um, but you have every stage you had to wait for the group in front of you to move through. So um, what that meant was there was a fair amount of downtime, but the folks I was shooting with were, were really a bunch of great uh, great guys. SoCal Air Gunner. Um, so, you know, we just had time to talk air gunning and it was really, really pretty awesome. So when that got all done, um, and in the afternoon, we, um, we got some news. Um, the news was that the final scores for the 100-yard bench rest were being released. I made the finals. So uh, that kind of changed the trajectory of the afternoon a little bit. Um, it went from thinking, okay, we're going to watch some big bore and then go back to the hotel and get some dinner and relax. Um, not really a surprise, but just really great. My wife had come in to watch me shoot. And so this, the whole morning she was with me shooting. Um, so we still pretty much, um, came back to the hotel and got some dinner and are relaxing. But now, um, uh, now I have the added, uh, the added task of getting ready for another round on the hundred yard bench rest. So I wouldn't change it for the world, but, um, it's uh, it's some work that has to be done yet. So I've got pellets I want to make sure I get ready and inspect. Um, they've already been inspected once, but I feel like I'm going to the finals. It might be worth taking a second peek at them and making sure everything is just right for, um, for tomorrow. So uh, after kind of absorbing that news um, and being congratulated by quite a few people, I went over to watch the slug challenge, the big bore slug challenge. And this is different than any other part of the entire competition. Um, they were set up along the big bench, uh, big benches on the long range. And not only were there targets, you know, at, I don't know, maybe 100, 200, somewhere in that range, uh, but also targets up on the mountainside. And I think... I think the farthest target was somewhere between 250 and 300 yards. I mean, some really far out stuff. Um, and I think the final target was um, the uh, Utah Air Guns logo way up on the mountain. I mean, it was really far up there. So they're making an elevated shot at really long distance. So uh, that part, <laughs> that, that's not the silent part. So some of those, some of those big boards are pretty loud and you could hear the booming and the clanging from all across the range. So that was really, uh, really fun to watch. I watched um, a couple of my friends shoot over there, uh, Chris Turek, and you've seen video of him. I don't know how they did it because I wasn't there long enough, but they somehow had it set. So if you, like there was a coyote target, for example, when you hit that, you heard a coyote howl. There was an elephant target. And when you hit the elephant, you had an elephant noise. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 
Nice shooting, Chris. Uh, so it was, you know, some fun added into that in addition to some pretty impressive uh, shooting. Also watched uh, Thane Simmons uh, shooting. Um, I think it was a 357 impact, but it could have been a 30. I didn't have time to talk to him and ask him. Ready to roast kicks? Impact. Damn, dude. What? It's in. Oh, you should count slugs. Slugs. Oh. Well, wait. 68 grand. 68? Ryan, yes? Uh, but he was making some pretty impressive shots uh, in and amongst all of the Texans uh, and, and the other big boards. I would say probably the majority of the rifles I saw were Texans. Uh, but cool shooting. And, you know, in that category of there's something for everybody at RMAC. So, um... Time for me to, to let it go because um, I've got to get some work done, get ready, get packed. I mean, tomorrow's kind of a challenging day because not only uh, now is there the speed silhouette finals to shoot, I missed that by one point. Uh, one point and, um, and I would have uh, had the points to be uh, in the finals there too. So as far as I'm concerned, this has been so much fun. Uh, and so, um, so rewarding to be a part of and, and the kind of event that I would absolutely recommend anybody who is on the fence about coming, just, just go. And, and whether it's this event, um, or, you know, the Pyramid Cup or Extreme Bench Rest, I mean, everybody you talk to says that, that all of these events just have great energy and it's a great time. Um, so if you're on the fence, especially if something's reasonably local i mean you know a state or two away i would absolutely recommend you get there because it's phenomenal stuff and um, it's been a great great thing to be a part of so like i said i got a little bit of work to do tonight we're leaving after the banquet tomorrow so uh, pretty much need you know we've kind of spread out throughout this hotel room and we got to clean that stuff up and get everything ready so in the morning we can pack up the car um, leaving the stuff we need for the shoot accessible um, then we're hang out and watch a little bit of the speed challenge and then um, the briefing for the bench rest and then the sportsman class shoots and then it's my turn to get back out there. So uh, big stage, um, excited for it. And I gotta be honest with you, just a little bit nervous. So um, hopefully I'll be able to channel all that. And uh, until the next video, shoot safe and shoot straight. We'll see you around.